music for the podcast. Uh, we don't actually have any theme music, so someone will probably make one up for us. I don't want to name any Rachel. I hope it's Rachel that does that for the podcast. <laughs> Should be a nice clean edit there. <laughs> Should be. Oh, it took you, I think it was 22 seconds to figure out why it wasn't working on your phone. Uh, we should just insert it the real way. <laughs> anyway, welcome back to the tiny room. Welcome back to Michael and Benjamin's podcast. I am Michael. And <laughs> you want to do a full name. Yeah, and speaking with... His usual level of authority. <laughs> ben, hello, Ben. Play. Hello. I'm still here. Ben, a few weeks ago there, we talked about um, the Ultimates. Yes, we did. We did. And did we talk about the authority? We did. We covered we did. parts of the authority. We, we covered the inspirational aspects. We talked... No, we talked about how Mark Miller ruined it. Yes, he millered the yes. hell out of it, I believe, is the way we phrased it. Yeah, there was a big hit on Reddit. Big hit on Reddit. <laughs> anyway, this week, we're going to talk about the authority. We're coming back. We're coming back because we ran out of ideas. Yay! <laughs> bottom up the barrel. Bottom up the so barrel. Ben, Yes. In classic Michael and Benjamin's podcast tradition, what even is the authority? The authority? Oh no, well, it was that was message. Well, it's your phone. It's your phone it's is on the table, rather it's... unprofessionally. Oh, for God, for God damn. For God damn. <laughs> so, The Authority is a comic book series that was piloted by Warren Ellis. Yeah. And Brian Hitch. Yeah, you nearly got around him for a second there. <laughs> I nearly millered myself. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> the original creator of The Authority was Warren Ellis. Um, and it comes out of a previous series that DC put out under their uh, Wildstorm label, which was um I don't think Wildstorm Stormwatch. was DC at that time, though, was it? I think it was. Was it? I think it was, a, but it wasn't directly affiliated. Yeah, it was an imprint of was it? DC. I think, I could be wrong. Probably are. Okay, <laughs> we'll have a Ben's Retractions next week. I could be wrong. Anyway, initially came out under Wildstorm as yeah. a label and uh, came out of a series called Stormwatch. Stormwatch was kind of a politically charged uh, superhero comic um, that looked at kind of extra, was it extra dimensional threats? Yeah, well, no, not only. I think the main thing about Stormwatch that it was... It was the first, well, no, it was hardly the first, but it was, um, it was a Black Ops superhero thing. It was a deep Ooh. cover. Well, actually, it wasn't. Oh. First of all, I'm in, very confused. In the early goings, basically before, did you read Stormwatch? No, I have so, never. It's 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 decent. Before um, Ellis. Yes. B W B B W Warren is his first name. Before BW, okay. back back before Warren BBW BBW yeah BBW, uh, it was your classic late nineties probably early nineties X Men ripoff. Yeah. So they were classic, you know, guys with bandanas. Grifter. Grifter. <laughs> yeah. Grifter. For example, was he? He in wears Stormwatch? a bandana on his face. He does. No, he does come into the authority later on. I don't think he started out. He was part of Wildstorm though. He yeah. was part of their label with the Wildcats. So there's all sorts of bloody cyborgs with claws and <laughs> yeah. poor man's... Cy- was it Cyberforce? Were they Wildstorm as well? I think so. Poor man, Poor man's Wolverine. Cyberforce. Poor, poor man's Cyclops. Cyberforce. Poor, stop saying Cyberforce. <laughs> and then uh, Warren Ellis came on board. Yes, Warren Ellis. And he introduced some new characters. He did. I have a quote on that. Go on. Like. Yeah, go on. Um, Do the quote. Because apparently Stormwatch was not so successful in the mainstream. Yeah. But it was quite enjoyed by the people at the office. And yeah. he says, one of the reasons I turned uh, their Stormwatch into the authority is that I found out that despite the fact that no one was buying Stormwatch, they kept it going because they liked reading it in the Wildstorm office and wanted to keep me employed. Yeah. And I felt so bloody awful about that that at the same time uh, had been so and at the same time had been so struck by Brian Hitch's Stormwatch issues uh, that the train of thought that uh, uh, that the train of thought that led to the authority began. Yeah, so see. that's it. So it, <laughs> Stormwatch was by all accounts including but one like, of its yeah, it wasn't, early fans. <laughs> it wasn't great. It it 
it got better when Ellis came aboard and Ellis introduced which is straight out of X-Men really but he introduced Stormwatch and Stormwatch Black Oh, and Stormwatch were the regular public face mission guys and Stormwatch Black starred Will Smith Suicide Squad? no because he's black <laughs> Jesus <man. laughs> it was an easy joke to make it was the 90s he was the biggest thing in television come oh. on come on wow wow <laughs> You've owned Wilson does there. So anyway. Wilson the um, crap out of me. Stormwatch Black was a couple of new characters that he Ooh. introduced. Ooh. Many of who went on to be in the authority. Ooh. Um, and the rest of them. Then all of Stormwatch got killed. By aliens. By aliens. Mm. The xenomorphs. Xenomorphs. Mm. You say xenomorphs, I say xenomorphs. And that's the whole podcast. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> See you later. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so they all they all died. Yeah, well, in kind horrific of. ways. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sure there was a lot of acid. Well, there was, was a, face melting. There was a character called Fahrenheit, and mm. she was a redheaded lady mm. with fire powers. Mm. And the aliens got her. Oh, and they got her with the face hugger. Oh, and then an alien popped out of her, and that alien had fire powers because they feed off the host and use yeah. the DNA of the host the to DNA. create new and stronger. Yeah, two of the characters in it were. Uh, Gases. Oh. One was a Japanese gas in a giant robotic sumo suit. Did the firepower somewhat tinker with that gas estate? No. Gaseous? But the other guy was Irish, actually. Oh. He, was a, he, was a, he was a policeman from Belfast. It's his boss. Yeah, we never talked about him. We should look back on him. We should look back on him. He's a, in a, he's a gas in a, in a human-shaped force field. Huh. And I think he exploded himself to kill the fire alien. I think... What was his name? That was good of him. Yeah. Was it something O'Donnell? I can't even remember the character's name. Fuji was the Japanese robot man. Fair enough. And Fahrenheit was the was the fire lady. Okay. And Flint was the the super strong lady with the unbreakable skin. Lady Lady Luke Cage. Lady Luke Cage. Yeah. She survived. Lady Cage. She survived because she closed her mouth really hard, and then the aliens couldn't open it, and they couldn't ah. they couldn't penetrate any of her orifices. It's quite clever. Yeah. And. I can't remember the Irish guy's name though. Sounds like a very particular nightmare. Bommy, Bommy O'Sullivan. Probably. Bommy O'Sullivan. Mr. Car Bomb. Yeah. Do they have a drink it. named after that? What? They call it an Irish Car Bomb. Americans have a have a a shot called an Irish, which is just yeah. very insensitive. <laughs> like it's this, it's just very insensitive. I couldn't believe it. I was like, and it was in a. I I, I shudder to admit where I read this, but in Buzzfeed. But they this... were talking about a night out in Dublin and where to go and then where to get an Irish a, a decent Irish car bomb. I can't believe you're shocked by this. This has been a this has been a divisive issue between Irish people and American people for years. I think there's between, a few more than that. Between calling things Irish car bombs and insisting on calling Patrick's Day Patty's Day. Patty's Day. They're the two major wedges between Patty's Day. Ben, focus. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> get back on topic. Sorry. Uh, so what? What then became of what of the of the stormwatches? So the stormwatches were then well, they, they the stormwatches didn't really become anything. I think some of the characters he introduced in in Stormwatch Black went on to become the Authority. Mm. Um, in 1999. 1999. May 1999. Wow. This is this is pre a rather significant event in global history, um, and quite important for the future. Uh, for the future of. The authority. So, it's quite an interesting uh, premise. It's it your is... opinion. <clears throat> gotcha. <laughs> Zing. Go on. Wow. What an asshole. So, <laughs> uh, thank you, Owen Wilson. That was very helpful. Um, moving on from there, a group of powered individuals. Yeah. Super powered individuals, yeah. to be precise, mm-hmm. uh, come together for yeah. the betterment of mankind. Right. And rather than be uh, kept on a tight leash by bureaucracy, mm-hmm. they decide to do things their own way. Do it their own way. Um, because they find a huge trans dimensional spaceship mm-hmm. called the Carrier mm-hmm. and make it their base of operations. Mm. It's kind of cool. Yeah. It's an abandoned vessel. Kind of like the Marie Celeste of an alien race. Um, and uh, they decide to make it their base of operations. And the team is led by a really cool character called Jenny Sparks. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Jenny Sparks is the spirit of the 20th century. Let's not talk about the characters until we're doing casting. Oh, sorry. Okay. Did people like it? People did like it. It was very well received. I Initially. Like yeah. As the Warren Ellis, Brian Hitch run. Mm-hmm. 
Um, and, and then a, a certain Scotsman got his comic ruining mitts on it. And, and that was the end of the authority. Miller! Um, no, but it was very successful initially. It was kind of a fresh take on what superheroes uh, could, could do. Uh, these superheroes had no qualms morally with executing people. Mm-hmm. Um, there was also a nice parody element in that some of the characters were a pastiche of established characters from other companies. Oh, mm. like DC. Like DC, almost specifically, exclusively mm. DC. Um, and they were kind of nice, gritty reboots of these characters. They were what these people would actually be like. Like, they're quite an arrogant superhero team. Mm. Hubristic, one might say. Oh, um, so many words. Yes. Um, no, they're quite uh, powerful. They worked outside of the law. And anytime someone tried to slap them on the wrist, they were like, no. No, nah, we're too strong. No, we're Try too strong. Us. Try and also, stop us. Also, they exist in a world where... Superheroes have been mostly wiped out. Yes, there is a, a a very a very large deficit of superheroics going on about the place. Is it true, Ben, that Miller's run was more popular in terms of finance and numbers and stuff? I'm at, I, I genuinely I'm not saying I genuinely don't know. I have a feeling it might have been. Yes. Was it? Yes. Oh, it was. Okay. Because you got. You took the good will. Warren Hellas. Warren Hellas. Warren Hellas. Yeah. Hell yes. Um, and Brian Hitch, who was not as big an illustrating name as Frank Quietly, who's quite big. Yeah. Brian Hitch probably still isn't as big. He's not that big. He I should love, be. I love Brian Hitch. His style is, is what did you call it once? Cinematic? Cinematic White, widescreen. Comics. Widescreen, widescreen comics. comics. But it's true. He does action comics extremely well. He does large-scale action comics even mm. better. Um, Frank Quietly has huge fan appeal due to his work with Grant Morrison. Yeah. Um, weird squishy faces. And weird squishy faces with squiggly lines. Yeah. It, I suppose if if uh, Brian Hitch is widescreen comics, then uh, Frank Quietly is organic yeah. comics. His, his drawings squishy, are very human and biological. and comics. Yeah. And then, of course... Mark Bloody Miller, mm-hmm. who has a much higher profile and is much better liked by fanboys because he usually makes superheroes kill things and <sighs> stop attacking fanboys. Beat there them. are there are no. listenership. No, I refuse. <laughs> Leave them alone. Fuck you, fanboys. Jesus. Fuck you. Did you read the replacement authority arc? It was fucking awful. It wasn't Mark Miller. Uh, Mark Miller was busy. Or something, and Frank Quietly was busy. Do it again. And they did a four issue kind of arc where the authority were stripped of their powers and replaced by a new of, team. Yeah, by a kind of knockoff team. Yeah. Oh, it was bad. I didn't finish it. No. I started, and then I was like, you spent so much time getting me to invest in the other characters, mm. and now I just don't give a crap about these ones. It really is one of the. It had so much potential. And it just squandered. Well, I think the other reason that a lot of this potential was squandered is because of uh, the rather ominous, significant co- uh, global event that I mentioned oh. uh, previously, oh. which was... Prince's hit 1999. Tonight we're going to party like it's 19. Yeah, basically they released The Authority at the same time as this single, and it was just blasted out of the charts. <laughs> um, no, I am referring to mm-hmm. the 9-11 not called the nine eleven. The ninth of November. Yes, the ninth of November, on our calendar. But to our good friends across the pond, mm-hmm. who seem to have no, no sensitivity when it comes to Irish cultural history. <laughs> uh, no, to them it's the eleventh uh, of of September, mm. um, which was the day the World Trade Centers came down. Yeah, not great. And the world became massively. High security, almost overnight. Um, And events of mass terrorism were seen as um, not only slightly insulting to the memory of the people that lost their lives in that particular event, um, but also became a thing that you just avoided altogether. And the first arc of The Authority is all about taking down a global terrorist who destroys several major cities um, in huge, massive explosions. Yes. So you can see why that pissed people <laughs> off. Um, and then 
DC, who had taken over at this point, uh, understandably became a little a little shook mm-hmm. and decided to discontinue that particular type of storytelling and, and much of the characters of the original run uh, were given camel personalities. Until... Until... Uh, until Well, no, DC discontinued that type of storytelling until they started making their own movies and every bloody film ends up with a city centre getting smashed to bits. Yeah. Or terraforming a planet. Yeah. Same I recently man. saw a thing the other day it was like, if Zod had just gone to Mars, this wouldn't have been an issue. But he couldn't go to Mars because he needed Kal-El. Kal-El was the Codex. He should just... You know, steal his blood just get him just get him and go to Mars just get him and go to Mars or better yet sit down with Kyle and say hey look you are the inheritor of our entire race could you please give us a hand yeah but he was a bad egg he was a bad egg but like bad eggs don't just say oh uh, maybe I'll just do a team up I'm just saying I'm just saying nothing nothing wrong with a cup of tea <laughs> and a chat <laughs> about the future of your race so look so yeah. look Justice League's probably going to be terrible. God, that's... So I haven't unclenched. What we've done is we've gone ahead and combined our powers yes. of talking about things we don't really know that much about. We are so good at it. <laughs> and uh, speculative fan casting to come up with an idea for an authority film. Yes, their we ba- have. Their backup plan. The authority. So shall we start with casting? Yes, let's. I have a slideshow. Ooh, let's I have a, I have a mini slideshow, but I think yours is probably better. Okay, well we'll we'll, we'll do it. We'll do it. This will be in the video again as usual. Obviously, Ben will do the video this week. Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> uh, so let's go. Right. So probably the most you can see now. It's all right. You can look. Okay, look uh, now. So oh, probably the most lastingly popular character from the Authority. Yes, is the Midnighter. Yes, because it's Batman without the, the gloves on. Yeah, well, Batman wears gloves, and so does the Midnighter, <clears throat> Ben. I meant figuratively. Oh. No. With regards to the level of PG-18 content available to both characters. Tell us, Ben, what the Midnighter is very quickly. The Midnighter is a genetically engineered super soldier type creation. Uh, I don't know if he's genetically engineered. Oh, I think he is. I think they put organs in him. Oh. As opposed to, like... A growing or genetically in modified then? I think just modified. Okay, he's a modified super soldier. No, yeah. Um and he has enhanced durability mm-hmm. and strength, yeah. first of all, because you need those. Uh, and reflexes. Mm-hmm. And his major power is exactly like the Bat God of Grant Morrison's JLA run. He can see every move his opponent makes before they make it. He literally calculates, not unlike um, Karnak from the Inhumans. TV show. TV show. But very unlike Karnak from the Inhumans comics. Yes, very unlike that. Exactly the same as the one from the TV show, because it's very hard to show when someone can see the flaw and everything and show what it means. Yeah. Um, but in this particular case, he can see every move, and he spends the entire length of the comic bragging about how anyone that goes up against him is going to lose horribly, and then follows through with that particular threat. Cool. Who did you cast? Uh, rather unusually oh. uh, Pedro Pascal I don't know who the- oh the, the Oberon Viper. Martell oh Oberon Martell the Viper yes the the Kingsman guy yes him as well oh really tell me why whiskey from from yeah. the- um, I think he's rather gruff yeah um, that's he can, important he's very good at action scenes as mm-hmm. we've seen yeah um, he has the right kind of smirk I think the smirk is very important to the Midnighter. He has to do a smirk. Because um, you can only see... He has a cowl mm. that looks like a half-bondage mask. Like Batman. Without the without the pointy ears. Just, that's literally the only difference. That's the only difference. He has ridges. Yeah. Those ridges. For, yeah. for his pleasure. So for... <laughs> Ridged for his pleasure. Mm-hmm. Um, and he contrasts very nicely with my pick for Apollo, which is rather important because... Are you doing Apollo now, are you? The Mid- no, the Midnighter is an openly gay character. Yes. Openly gay. Um, why, are you, why are you making that Because he that would have been with your openly... Hands? What? Every time you say openly gay, you're making a symbol like with like the big bone. No, no, I'm not. You are. No, I'm not. My hands are below the tiny table in the tiny room. Don't you don't you besmirch me to the audience. Is he openly gay? He, um, yeah, he's quite... It's because he can kick anyone's ass, I think. I don't think it, you know. But he was openly gay at a time when it was not so popular for superhero characters to be gay at all. 1999 wasn't, wasn't the 
open but LGBT define friendly Define what you mean by openly gay. As in he is in a committed relationship with another man. gay man and yes. does nothing to hide that fact. But doesn't he though? Like, does the general public know he's gay? Ah! Fair enough. He's gay to teammates. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm not he, yeah. I'm not arguing that he's gay. I'm saying he's not open. He's not openly anything. gay. Yeah. Because he has a secret identity. But that changes over the course of the arc. Yeah. And he becomes... They become the world's most fashionable gay couple, which he hates <laughs> very much. I don't count those later episodes. I'm being that's, pedant. That's fair. So I've yeah. chosen Joel Edgerton. Joel Edgerton? Mm-hmm. Ah. Uh, look, it's looks, intensity. Mm. The 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 ideal cast, I thought, is now too old. Who was it? Daniel Craig. That would have been excellent. I but, I toyed around with Jason Statham. Oh, uh, me too. Mm. But also, I think Daniel Craig wouldn't do a convincing American accent, and Midnighter does need to be American. He does. He's. It's a very international squad, but I think he needs to be American. Yes. Let's move on. Let's move on. I don't know who I have next. Let's, Neither do we'll, I. Let's see. I'm very excited. Oh, oh yes, Jennifer Sparks. Jennifer Sparks. So Ben, quick. Who is she? Uh, Jennifer Sparks is the spirit of the 20th century she is mm-hmm. the leader of the authority team uh, because she is the spirit of the 20th century she is allowed to use the most common power source and the most powerful power source found at that time in that era um, and that is electricity. electricity so her name is Jenny Sparks she is actually from another dimension is she? Um, she she is isn't she? no don't think she so. is from another dimension no I don't think so are you sure? Mm-hmm. I'd say I'm more sure that she isn't than you're sure that she is. All right, fair enough. She's not from another dimension. She's from another dimension. Because she has travelled to other dimensions. Ah, and lived there. Okay, that's the mistake I've made. I'm sorry. She was. She's an interdimensional traveller. Yeah, she was kind of the the what's that word for the person from a country who goes to another country? Immigrant. No, as a representative. Ambassador. She was kind of the ambassador. Ah, for she's a World trans-dimensional War. ambassador. Kind of for it's World War Two cool. England, with another universe. But she was born in this universe. She was born in this universe then. Uh, and she's quite powerful. Yeah. She's quite bossy. She's very feisty. And you've cast someone that I don't like. Ah, <laughs> good. So hold on a second. Here's the thing about who I've cast. So she's from London. Yeah. She's very importantly from London. She, she has to have the London look. And I don't mean the gap between the front teeth. What, the Maybelline London look? Yeah. yeah. She has to be from London. She has to be blonde. She's a blonde lady. And very importantly, she stopped ageing when she was 19. Oh, shit. So, in your face. Shit. In your face, whoever you've picked. Shit. You foolish man. Shit. So, I have picked Cara Delevingne. Shit. She's not shit. Well, look, she, she hasn't shit. been She's good. She's a terrible actress. Yeah, hold on a second. In anything. Hold on a second. She hasn't been good in, in anything. anything so far. This much is definitely I'll give true. You this. No, shut up for a second. No. Do you remember the film? Oh, what's it called? Valerian and the City of a Thousand yes. Pounds. Do you remember that film? I didn't see it. Oh, you didn't see it. I remember the trailer. There yeah. are scenes in that where she plays Jenny Sparks. Okay. Now, if you remember my complaints about that film, is that she was wildly inconsistent. Yes. In some, she was kind of a hard bitten badass, and then in others, she was in. A simpering age to yeah. the male protagonist. And then in yeah. others, she was in... What's that word? Ange, en, ingenie. That, yeah. yeah. So, with a good director, she would be an excellent Jen, Jen, Jenny Sparks. No. Nope. Who'd you pick? Emily Blunt. Emily too Blunt old. Is too old. Too old. She's too old. But perfect characteristically speaking, and the kind of character she plays would be right in line with that. Yeah, she's better at uh, acting. Very sassy. Yeah. Very London. Yeah. Um... Looks the part, apart from the age. Yeah. Um, and I thought it would have been much better. She looks much older in the comics than 19, though. She yeah. doesn't look Well, that's the problem about comics, isn't it? Yeah, it's very hard mean, to... Brian Hitch only does mid-20s to early 30s. He just does attractive people. Yeah. Yeah. In their prime. Yeah. That's his whole shebang. So, that's actually a good choice, though. Mm. It's a very good choice. Yeah, it's a shame. I mean, the fact that she stopped aging at 19 isn't vital to the character. Well, in that case... I'm going to say Emily Blunt. E to the B. Yeah, we who's need a... Uh, Let's look who's next. We need, uh, I don't know. Will I, will I press the, the button for you? Yeah. Oh, oh look yes. who it is. So, That's a good call. Yeah, shut up for a second. Sorry. No spoiler. You're Sorry. spoiling our own podcast. for me. <laughs> who, who, who are we talking about? Apollo. 
Mm. Apollo is the Superman pastiche of the authority. Yeah. Um, he is quite literally a modern day sun god. Yeah. Um, he drives all his power. He has a halo. Well, hold on. Hold on a second. Head. Hold on a second. He's not quite literally a modern day sun god. Oh yeah, he doesn't belong to any canon. Sorry, I use literally in the newfangled sense yeah. as opposed to the correct Oxford grammar sense. Apologies. He's figuratively a modern day. Sun god. <laughs> exactly. Damn yes. it. Because there are um, actual like this yeah, there is, are gods in this. Now that they've blended with DC, oh, they actually have an why Apollo. Did they do that anyway. Yeah, talk about Apollo more. Um, hyperpowered. Is he genetically engineered? No, th- same deal. Same deal. Yeah, possibly Henry, added to Henry Bendix was a kind of evil Charles Xavier oh. of Stormwatch. And he made them. And he made them. Oh, okay. in, in the garden. Well, he's hyper-powerful, ridiculously yeah. overpowered. He's um, Superman. He's Superman, um, with no qualms with killing. So he yeah. eliminates people quite easily um, using that. He is gay with Midnighter in a couple. He's gay with Midnighter. Is that not... You don't say someone no. is gay with someone. Sorry, he's in a relationship with <laughs> Yeah, Midnighter. there you go. <laughs> so politically incorrect. <laughs> I, don't, I don't mean to be. <laughs> like, I really just don't think when I open my mouth. Anyway. Oh. Anyway. Go on. Tell, mm. us, tell us who you picked. So I picked Charlie Hunt. Who I discovered his name today isn't Charlie Hunnaman. No, Hunnam. 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 It's Charlie Hunnam. Hunnam. Um, again, it's mostly looks. He looks very like him. He he has the look all right. Doesn't have the frame. No, he would need to bulk. He's hulking. Like he's yeah. A, Midnighter is the or Apollo is the biggest. Easily, uh, yeah. One. But you know, there's always steroids. And Chris, they they do take them. Chris Hemsworth wasn't that big before he got Thor. Yes. Um, he's gone back down. He's much slimmer in the yeah. new Thor. Mm. Uh, which we haven't seen yet which we haven't seen yet but uh, what's his name was much smaller before he got Superman Henry Cavill also Bane you can you do, they do this a lot with Dark Knight Rises Tom Hardy is quite a small man Tom Hardy is tiny yes he's my height he's your he's height five eight I know and I read an art interview totally off topic I read an interview <laughs> with Tom Hardy a few years ago have I ever told you this before no. <laughs> and uh, and it said and Tom Hardy bulked up to a massive 90 kilos for the role. And you were there going... I'm like, I'm 87 kilos! I'm not that... Yeah. I'm like... It's not that... It's, he's standing on a box. That's big, why he looks big. big. Uh, down camera angles as well. Mm. A lot of low camera mm. angles. Anyway, we're totally off topic. Um, Hunman. Hunnam. 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 It's a good has choice. The, has the look. Got the range. Got the range. Can do American. Yes. Has um, for... A long part of that series. Yeah. Um, Sons of Anarchy. Sons of Anarchy. Uh, wasn't great in King Arthur. King Arthur wasn't good. King it was Arthur a shite film. might not have been his fault. It wasn't. Also, the thing about this being an ensemble... An ensemble? He, is he, he doesn't have to do a lot of acting heavy lifting in this movie. No. He, he has to stand around, be handsome... He does. He's for the ladies. I've, I see. I've got this covered. Go on. I, I got. I, got I you. think I might know who you. I have. got you. I think you know who I have. I, I don't. I'm not Do you sure. Want to guess? But we'll show you. Shall I guess? Is it Alexander Skarsgård? No, it's not. Oh, go on. Then. It's not. It's Army Hammer. Army Hammer. He is Charlie Hunnam. <laughs> Except he's much bigger. He's not much bigger. Army Hammer is like six five. Is he? I mean, he's huge. Is he a real big person? Uh, he's very big. Not a Hollywood big person. Have you seen person? the Man from Uncle? Yeah. He's a monster. He towers over Henry Cavill. Oh, he's in Cavill. He's Ca- Cavill, Cavill. Oh. He's much bigger. Oh. And I think with the long hair, he's almost ideal. Like, take a look at that. I don't know. It's, I, I we mean, use the same picture. For I know, yeah, that's great. <laughs> <crazy. laughs> um, but, um, yeah, I think Army Hammer Army is Hammer better. Is By the way, if anyone is listening and, and cares, um, if you could let us know which of the picks you prefer, yeah. we'd, we'd love to know. Yeah. A little poll. We very rarely actually both Down do below. enough research to do this. Um, and we'll also do a poll on Instagram where you can choose because they have idea. a new poll feature. Yeah. So we'll, we'll do that. So check it out. Let us know which you think is better. I think Charlie's more handsome. I think Army's got a better build and he's all American. Yeah, but Charlie is very all American in Pacific Rim. Ugh. It's not a great movie. Ugh. But he. He did not sign on for Pacific Rim 2. No. I noticed John I Boyega think, is taking over. I don't think he particularly wanted to go he back. Couldn't blame him. No. It couldn't wasn't blame him. But look. He, the director didn't go back. Nobody went back. <laughs> They're using Idris Elba's face, which I'm fairly certain he's not happy about. <laughs> Today, 
We are cancelling the apocalypse. Did you see that John Boyega has been given a very similar kind of thing? It's like black guy does speech in script again. No. Is yeah, that what it says? It's, I, it's, I swear to God, it's like the same basic... I think he's his son. Cancel the pocket. I think it's. I think that's the aim of it. What's his name? Striker gives... Pentecost. I don't know. Character that needed to die so that the protagonist <laughs> yeah. would care again. The Liam Neeson. The Liam. <laughs> oh my God! It is the Liam Neeson. Liam Neeson dies in a lot of things. Anyway, let's move on. Yes. Sorry. Next. Next. Yeah, we're ah. not. Gonna... No way. If you have the same one for this. No. Not at all. So, the next one is The Doctor. Tell us who is The Doctor. He's The Doctor is part of a long mystical line of what is called the Shaman in ah, this particular... Ah, he's a Black Panther. He's he's not a Black Panther. Okay. But in, in terms of the, the inherited title and powers element mm-hmm. of things, yes, there is no Panther God in this. The Shamans tap into the mystical force that surrounds the planet and it's his duty to protect... Is it the dimension or the universe? I think it's just the Earth. Just the Earth. From any kind of threat that may um, that may appear. And the wonderful thing about uh, this character is that he can tap into all the shamans before him. So he mm. can meditate to a special place and communicate with all the previous versions of himself. So a lot like Avatar. Or Black Panther. Or Black Panther. Um, or Avatar. Um and he can get advice and <laughs> from that was very good you just said the same thing again <laughs> but your face was even the same <laughs> I wish we were filming this that was a great moment uh, so uh, yeah that's um, that's what he does and it, the best part about the character he's quite he's kind of the comedy relief in, in a sense in Ellis's run yeah in that he he enjoys the reefer mm. that the kids are enjoying he's yeah. Dutch Dutch yeah. He's Dutch. Um, And he is not at all ready to be in the authority. He's very uncomfortable with the level of responsibility that has been given to him. And yet, easily the most powerful. He is the most powerful. He can change reality at a molecular level. Mm -hmm. um, And do whatever he wants. So this chap, who you've... I I could almost guess you have never heard of. It looks like Limmy from Limmy's show. No, it's not. Do you know I've gone show. No. Oh. But I know it's not that. Okay. I have gone independent. You have? Yeah. This is a Dutch actor. Oh. Mm. His name is Robert de Hoog. <laughs> Very good. Right? Uh, he speaks English fluently, so that's not an issue. Um, he I saw him in an Irish film, the name of which has completely left me, but that doesn't matter. He one of the key things about the doctor is he's going to later be a bit of a druggy man. Yes. And he, he, one of his background is he was a dot com billionaire, who became a druggie man. No way. And overdosed. And when he overdosed, he met the shaman, the shamans, and they gave him the power because the previous doctor was killed by Stormwatch. Do you know that, Ben? Ooh. He was so, in. Go on. Pri- Never mind. I, I probably have it wrong. Imprisoned or killed? Oh, he's killed. Yeah. Killed. His soul, he he was killed and his soul was imprisoned. But what? Then, but then later escaped. Doesn't matter. It, it's when it got shit. What? It's when it got shit. No, wait, hang on. Yeah. Sounds an awful lot like bullshit to me, my <laughs> Because when they die, they go to the, the garden with all the other shamans. But they didn't want that to happen because then he would have been able to tell the new doctor that he had been murdered. So they sent the spirit of death. Out. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's shit. Murder. Is this Rose? Rose tattoo. It doesn't matter. Fuck. So anyway, uh, this guy, right? Fucking bullshit. <laughs> One of the best... Wait, no, stop. I'm not done. No, stop. You are. One of the best things that <laughs> this guy said, I think he says it, was all magic is, is change. Yeah. And he waxes very philosophical. There, this guy has a... This Robert de Hoog, he has a great <laughs> uh, kind of sizzle reel for What's his... What's a sizzle reel? It's when actors combine the best bits of their actoring... Into a portfolio Into of sorts. Kind of a portfolio, like a three-minute mm. video of them actoring. Mm. And this three-minute video ac- of him actoring looks like an audition to play the Doctor. There's down-and-out scenes. Nice. There's, like, he's he's in the nude, having had some sort of drug problem. Nice. And then there's waxing philosophical about... We're, we're all we're all just insects chittering on the wind. It's, aren't we just... He's spot on. Aren't we just... This guy... 
He's a, he's only about thirty. To who, you dark horse? But look, we'll get him in. Dark horse to who? Who did you pick? I picked a very bog standard. James McAvoy. Oh yeah. Scotsman James McAvoy. Good choice. Particularly after seeing uh, Atomic Blonde, the character that he plays in Atomic Blonde. I haven't seen Blonde. Atomic Blonde. You sneaky fucker. Um, Percival. Agent Percival mm. in Atomic Blonde. He is very much, almost exactly the the subculture kind of character that he occupies. There's lots of drugs. There's lots of um, manic kind of energy. That hangs around him, and there's lots of moments of oh fuck, I can't do this. Yeah, even if you just think of Charles Xavier when he's coming down from yeah. his uh, his magic yeah. leg, and magic um, leg juice. actually, I'd put him in shaved head mode. You have a, a shaved head. De Hoog is yeah. shaved headed there as well. I'd almost leave him shaved headed. I think it suits the kind of rave mm. kid a little bit better. Let's move uh, on. Yes, let's move on. Oh, you picked a white lady. No, I didn't. Well, I mean, let's go on. Yes, you bloody did. Who are we talking about? Uh, we're talking about the mechanic. Yes, the mechanic. The mechanic the is engineer. filled. Sorry, the engineer, not the mechanic. The mechanic That's very Statham. embarrassing. <laughs> I've got Jason Statham on the brain. Um, yes, the engineer. She, her blood is filled with nanites. Nanites, nanites or nanobots. Nano I can't remember which ones. They're very microscopic, uh, yeah. and they <laughs> <laughs> very microscopic. Is that right, <laughs> Donald? <laughs> the li- listen. <laughs> Listen, America does the best nanites. They're really, really small, really microscopic. Nobody can see them. I can't even see them. It's amazing. (laughs) So. (laughs) Great. Um, So, anyway. um, She can communicate with machines. Yeah. Um, Her body, well, when she wants it to be, her skin is made of metal. Mm -hmm. Her hair um, yeah. is made of cables and oh, wires God. and things yeah. like that. Um, she can transform her body into various accoutrements, yeah. such or as weapons, things. Uh, or create things from, from scratch. She's very important in the Authority because she communicates with the Carrier, which is the huge alien machine, and it opens up her character's new possibilities because it turns out she can communicate with any technology, mm. be it from this dimension or another. Um, and her powers get kind of an upgrade when she... She's also, in some sense, the Authority's Green Lantern. Yeah, I guess. If they need a thing, she'll make she, the she thing. She takes care of the thing. Yeah, she'll um, make the thing. Uh, from a character point of view, um, she is promiscuous. Uh, no, not in the Warren Ellis one she isn't. She's sexually liberal. She's a woman in the 21st century. Well, the 20th century, I suppose. It's the 20th century, yeah. technically. Yeah. But don't call her promiscuous, Ben. You're a bad is egg. That, is that not <laughs> what she is? No, I wouldn't say so. How many boyfriends does she have? She doesn't say she, she gets promiscuous in the Miller run, but everyone I'm very, gets... I'm very Catholic, see, so everyone... I'm going to say she's promiscuous. <laughs> everyone gets heightened. In I'm the... sorry. She's a woman who mm-hmm. enjoys the company of others. In the, in the Warren Ellis comic, she seems to have a somewhat casual relationship with Jack Hawksmore. Yes. That's it. Yes. That's it as far as her promiscuity goes. All the rest was Mark Miller. And we're fucking, choosing to ignore that. Fucking Miller. Anyway, who'd you cast? Uh, Antonia Thomas. I don't know who that is. Um, she was in Skins. Do you remember? Or not Skins, Misfits. Do you remember Misfits? I do. Who was she in Misfits? Um, I don't remember She's like the very... She's the one who has the power of uh, causing promiscuity in others. She makes oh. other men with physical touch. I don't remember uh, that. They become very lecherous around her and attempt to have sex with her in a very aggressive manner. Interesting. Um, Where is she from? She is from London. You see, I, this lady, the, a- Angela Spica? Angela Spica. She's a, no, that's the character's name. She's, ah. she's Latin. She's a Latina. Ah, I got uh, that completely wrong. I'm yeah, very sorry. No, she's a Latina and she's from New York. Oh, so this lady here, she's not terribly famous. Her name is Carla Sousa. We use the same picture again. I know. <laughs> the it was the most famous picture. Uh, this is Carla Sousa. She's um, in How to Get Away with a Murder. Ah, How to Get Away with Murder. Or How I Met Your Mother. How I How One I Got house. Away with Meeting Your Mother. How to Lose a Guy in Ten Days. Yeah, mm. she's in that. She is. Oh, she's an actual Mexican. So it's nice that those fake Mexicans. It's nice that the first thing you said when you saw her was, "Oh my God, she's white." (laughs) She, come on. She's she's a Mexican. Come on, if we're going on purely racist opinions of people, (laughs) there's no way I would scream a racial slur at her in the street. One of the most interesting things about the engineer as a character is she's a normal lady. She was working in a lab 
yes. when Stormwatch killed the previous engineer. Shit. And his machine was designed to pass on his powers to her. So this is very much an inherited super team. Then. Some of them. Yeah. A lot of them. Yeah, well, By yeah. the sounds of things. The Doctor and the Engineer, very specifically, mm. are the second versions of both Jenny of the Sparks, characters. though. She's yes. technically in her cycle. So she's very much a normal lady. And this lady plays normal ladies. Also, huge mm. in Mexico, apparently. That's so good. We'll bring in the market. That's good. Bring in the market. Let's move on. Donald Trump won't like that, though. No. Ah, here we go. Ah, look who you picked. <laughs> look who you picked. <laughs> So Jack Hawksmoor yes. is the god of cities. Yes. He is also modified. He's not genetically engineered. He Sold was, those feet. He was kidnapped like repeatedly throughout his childhood and modified by, not aliens, humans from the 70th century. Oh, the future. Yeah, who modified him to have city powers. And his powers are very poorly defined. He's super strong. Yes, super, super strong. Super fast. He can run up walls. He has... What instantaneous like, feedback on the health of cities <laughs> yeah. yeah he has what looks like rubber s- tires on the soles of his feet yes uh, or sometimes metal grills uh, he can talk to cities he can see through window panes he's very acrobatic he can teleport mm. he can do lots of different things in cities who did you choose Jude Law Jude Law's a good one yeah. Jude Law because he has a receding hairline well we've both chosen people with receding hairlines yeah I chose Jason Statham you did he has the better build for it, I think. Statham or yeah, Law? Statham. Law's a bit thin. Statham. He couldn't bull. I think he's very charming, though, isn't he? Hawksmore is a very charming. He's a charming gentleman, but so charming. Statham. Statham is very charming. You see, what what to me sticks out for about Hawksmore is he is scruffy. He is scruffy. He's a scruffy guy, and there's very few people in Hollywood who do barefooted suit wearing scruffiness as well as he actually looks oh man, you've chosen your picture very wisely he's not wearing shoes yeah. in a suit he often with a t-shirt yeah I mean he's the only thing is he ha- he doesn't have quite enough hair to nail the look mm. but I don't think you actually al- you don't always need an exact physical no reality. absolutely not absolutely not um, I just thought Law kind of suited it characteristically speaking he does scruff he does. Did you see I John just, Hemingway? I can't see Jude Law winning a fight. No, that's very true. That's very, very true. You know. You should watch Dom Hemingway though. Dom Hemingway, right in my D O M Hemingway. Um, it's quite good. Quite good. We're nearly out of time. Holy yeah, God, let's Michael. Who are we talking about uh, next? next? Oh God, this is such a bad rip-off of a character. This is just Hawk Girl uh, in the Authority world, and her name is Swift. Yeah, but she's Tibetan. Uh, and she's. Tibetan. Um, oh, you pick. Uh, that's interesting. Who did you, that you chose that? I chose the other lady from the Wolverine, which is Tao. Ah, oh, that's hilarious. Okamoto. So uh, I, I and I was going to choose her, really and I, I chose not to. I chose Tao uh, Okamoto from. You chose the more classically attractive one. Yes, I am a, a committed shallow man. You see, I've chosen Rila. She's very interesting. Man. She's quite attractive, though. She's she's not an unattractive lady. She isn't. She's a very she's attractive very lady. very attractive lady. Either of us would be lucky to be gay with her. Either of us. Yes. I'd be gay with her. Is that how, is that how you <laughs> say to be in a relationship? I see what you've done now. So, anyway. I see. Um, I'm the villain now. I'm I, the biggest. I've okay. chosen her because she is... She has sharp features. She does a bird-like. She has a bird-like face. She, does. <laughs> she has. Archie. It's not being. She's avian. Yeah. In her. She's very thin. She's yeah. very light-looking. I th- I just think she would suit it very well. And also, to be honest, she's she is the least important character in the the first arc. Absolutely. Which we would adapt into a movie. Absolutely. That's it. Uh, absolutely. I think that's it for us. Good choices. Yeah. Yeah. Good choices. So anyway, quickly onto the pitch. Yeah. So very quickly, the pitch, right. Michael. So. Very simple. Elevator right? pitch me. Very simple, okay? We're basically going for arc one from Warren Ellis' yes. story, but with uh, some of the kind of key scenes from later th- arcs thrown in. Yes. So we start in a normal day in Moscow. Okay. And it's shot from the ground up. I'll take that. We're not going to take any cityscape shots. We're not having any of this crap. People, normal people having a normal life. So no life. sloppy mid 2000s comedy shots no. no living in the city no just normal people it's normal tough. life then Asians start flying in out of nowhere <laughs> and blowing everything up right and all of the Asians 
totally fine. All of the Asians are played, they're all the same, and they're played by a digitally de aged Chow Yun Fat. Nice! I'll take that. Right? So, the attack happens, no one comes and saves the day. Just Moscow gets smashed. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, Jenny Sparks, Cara Delevingne, uses her electricity powers and electricities into, like, the command centre of the Russians and says, Sorry, we weren't ready. It won't happen again. Right? Fair enough. Then, Interesting start. Yeah. Then we go to a flashback. Ooh. And in the flashback, we see a horrible regime in Asia. Mm. And in this regime, uh, we see a mother protecting her three twin boy Triplets. <laughs> Three twins are called triplets. <laughs> you so got she's it. protecting you these triplets uh, from this horrible regime, and they get the mother gets taken off them, and they get sure. separated. Then the next part is we, we're going through this very quickly because there's yeah, nothing new okay. original. The next part we see um, we see the clean up in Moscow. Yes. So this is bodies, where we, the chaos. It's where we get to see the Debris. It's where we really get to see the characters' powers. Like we see oh, that. the authority is undertaking the, yes. the cleaning. So the authority is helping. So Jack Hawksmore takes them in. We see that he can kind of communicate with the city and see where she's hurting. Uh, we see that Apollo can pick things up quite with easily, strength, and fly away with them. We see that Swift can hear people trapped down under the concrete. Got super uh, senses. We see the Midnighter stopping some looting. Nice. I show that he's really just it's always the, good for. Yeah, the, he's just he's just, just a beat some folk a fighter, up. right? Then. We have the next flashback, and the three brothers, who were separated from their mother, have been taken in by the leader of this evil regime, Come on. and they seem to be taking, undertaking some sort of training, mm -hmm. very competitive training. Mm -hmm. Then we go back to the present day, mm -hmm. and we see the engineer for the first time, and the doctor for the first time, mm -hmm. who are trying to figure out the attack. Yes. And we see the engineer using machines. Using some triangulation the, going on. Right. You know. And then we see the doctor off in his magic world talking with the other previous doctors about what it might have been. So we get the two, we get clued in about the, the two characters. Nice. And anyway, uh, between the engineer using her prediction algorithms or some shit and the doctor talking about with the, with the spirits and Swift detecting air patterns and changes oh, of course they determine that the next thing is going to be in London Ooh. and Jenny Sparks is like these bastards I, I was born you do the accent so that's I, my fucking city isn't it <laughs> yeah, I, yeah I was born in London innit they'll not have London as long as there's breath in my lungs exactly Darling. governor yeah so uh, they, they head to London yeah <laughs> And we have the big fight scene, basically. Nice. And uh, we see Apollo has the Superman powers, and he's Superman the people, the Chow Yun fats. <laughs> and then Midnight was fighting them. Everyone's fighting them. Everyone's they fighting their powers. Well, scrapping. And, yeah. Uh, Midnighter uh, encounters one of the Chow Yun fats who has realised he's outmatched and is holding a child hostage, and he oh, gives him a speech. That, what a dick. I can, I can see your every move. Oh, yeah. I can get you. You can wear him down. Yeah. Verbally. Yeah, so they, they win in London. Woo! The good guys win. Uh, they, all the bad guys end up getting corralled into the river, and Jenny Sparks electrocutes the river. That was a deadly scene in the going. Then, great. another flashback. Yes. And in this flashback, um, the three brothers are older, and they're mm. undergoing some sort of ceremony with the leader of the country. Ooh. And then, the three brothers kill him. Surprise attack. What? And the three brothers have taken over. That's not canon. I know, I've changed it. Oh. So the three brothers have taken over They're the country. Wily Fox Knight. Yeah. So then uh, they, they, go, they go back to the carrier and this is where sure. we see them doing their normal day-to-day -day things. This is where we find out Midnighter and Apollo are a couple. Yay. Because they just go off together. They're gay no together. No big deal. Yeah, they're gay together. Uh, we see that um, Jack and... And Angela are a kind of couple. Kind are also of, kind of gay together. Are kind of gay together, and then they find out uh, that we go to another flashback, and in this flashback we see that the three brothers are the leaders of the country Ooh. until one of the brothers kills the other two. What? Bam! He's the leader. He's the Chow Yun Fat. What? 
fat. Yes. So Xiao Yun Fat is the leader of this evil country, and he shows that his symbol, his family symbol, was a circle with three dots on it. Yes, because there was three of them. Because there were three of them, and now there's one, and blah de blah. So they they Angela, the engineer, the engineer overlays this onto the globe. Nice. And sees that the first one was on Moscow, the second knot was on London, and the third one will be on Los Angeles. Los Angeles, the so city of angels. We have to save Los Angeles. Dun, 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 dun. Um, so Jenny and Swift yes. go to Los Angeles yes. to speak to the government. They're like, come on, the government. The, do the, something. They're coming, they're coming. No, do nothing. We're going to sort it out. And the government is like, we will not do nothing. We are going to defend our... And okay. they're like, if, but if you get the fucking airplanes in the this air... This sovereign then, border is ours. Yeah, well, don't worry. We we'll, will we'll, hold the line. It's like, you don't have any superhumans. We have the superhumans. Let us do it. And then, because if your airplanes are in the way, it's going to be a disaster. And It's weird to think of a world where Barack Obama isn't the default voice for an American president. Yeah. <laughs> back to George W. Bush. So, then, we go back to the carrier. And... Um, the doctor is taking his medicines mm-hmm. and Swift and Jenny are off the ship. Okay. And then we find out that the bad guy has somehow learned to teleport onto the ship. <gasps> so he what? sends an attack to the ship. Oh, you're dipping into other runs, See? young man. See, it's all about conglomerating. Mm. So they attack the ship and who's on the ship? Jack is on the ship. Jack is on the he ship. He doesn't have that many powers because it's not it's a city. Not a city. Midnight is on the ship. Midnight is not great against a horde. He can take two or three. He's one man. Uh, doctor's out of it. Engineer's on the ship. She's doing all right. She's doing okay. She can make but, a big old machine gun. Yes. Yeah, in the end, Apollo has to release all his solar energy, and he burns them all Fake and collapses rises. on the ground. Oh, balls. Which is great because that's usually the female character's job. The female characters no, are not always, physically strong enough they because men have, are sexist when they write screenplays. Well, the women yeah. always have the fainty powers. Yeah, yeah. Invisible woman, Jean Grey. Unbelievably hidden strength until you use it, in which case women have no strength anymore. And then they faint. Yeah. So oh. Apollo faints. They're overcome. So, actually, after Apollo faints, that's when Angela's computer thing determines it's going to be Los Angeles. So it's like, oh, no, no, sorry, that's wrong. Forget I said that. So Damn they're it. like, shit, we have to get to Los Angeles. Uh, they're, they're going sure. they're going and Apollo's out Doctor's out Jenny and Swift aren't here none of us have you, you can't get there you're too slow I can't fly you can teleport but you're just one man so they decide to tell Jenny and Swift to stay there and they'll the engineer will fly the doctor and try to get him revved up on the way of course but slaps someone, about face. someone has to, someone has to stop the or at least intercept the bad guys before they get most yeah. of the way. So they have sure. to throw Apollo out mm-hmm. of the carrier, <gasps> and they tell him, "Don't worry. As you're falling, you will hopefully absorb enough sunlight to it's get your powers risky. back." And Midnight is like, "No, you don't do this." That's the guy I'm gay with. That's yeah. We can't be gay <laughs> together if you're dead. <laughs> And then, so they throw Apollo out, Apollo <laughs> his powers back, and then Jack and Midnighter, Jack uses his city teleporting powers to teleport to the evil city, where him and Midnighter do the bad guy in. Get Phil. to work. Elevator pitch, and zing! Uh, I would give you a moderate budget with which to complete that, so that it would be a flop, because Yay! I strained you, it's my fault. <laughs> 170 million, please. You can have ten. Oh, no. We've no huge name actors, so that would be cheaper. That would be cheaper. Um, that would be cheaper. But We're not letting Zack Schneider direct it. No, God. So no. that would be cheaper. No, yeah, that would be cheaper. I don't know. We who might you... actually suit on location again. I don't know who you'd get to direct it. Good question. Like, who do you want to do a mid-budget superhero, superhero film? film? Who, who does a good mid-budget superhero That's film? That's a good question. Patty Jenkins? She could do it. She could definitely have a... Patty's got my vote. She, she'd be able to... Well, I will. I think it's going to be the Russo brothers, isn't it? I think they might be too expensive. Like Captain America. They are now, but yeah. they would be ideal for that level of superhero Ensemble, superhero yeah. heroing. Yeah. I don't know if they do... I don't. I think they might... Um, they tinker your script a little bit. bit. Yeah, well, it might be a bit, a bit PG. Oh, you wouldn't be. We, we see, you wouldn't be Marvelous. So who would you? Who would? Who would be? Who would be sponsoring you? Well, it's DC. Oh yeah. Shit. It's 
DC, but it can exist outside the DC Shit. continuity. It's DC's plan B. Their vertigo line of movies. Of movies. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> oh, yeah. We'll talk about some other things Brutal. next week, I think. Because we're, we're, we've gone pretty... Yeah, we're pretty much on time. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, um, thanks for listening in that case let us know what you think of our fan castings let yeah. us know if you care about the authority Anymore. and let us know um, if you think there's anything similar to the authority out there now if there's anything that's doing anything like the authority did let us know what you think yeah okay leave a comment bye bye